Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. And two years ago when I bought this John Deere 325G skid steer, I was about a quarter of an inch from buying a Bobcat T66. And someone I knew personally who had owned a Bobcat told me that their quality had went downhill and he'd had all kinds of problems. And if you talk to any number of people about any brand, you will find someone who is disgruntled. And at the very last minute, that guy changed my mind. I bought the John Deere. And it's been a great machine, other than I kind of question if it's got too much power loss when I turn and I'm doing another function. So I was just at the Oklahoma City Farm Show, and I ran into probably the most knowledgeable salesperson I've ever seen at a trade show. And he could have an answer like that that went in detail about every question I could think of. And after talking to him about an hour, I said, what the heck, let's turn the camera on and pass all that knowledge that he's got on to you guys. And if I was buying the machine today and had the same, you know, use case that I have for this now, I would buy that Bobcat. All right, so I'm here looking at Bobcat equipment, and I was just looking at the tractors, and I made the comment that these are made by Coyote. But you were telling me Bobcat's actually starting to make those themselves. Yes, at their Statesville plant, that's correct. Yeah, which is a really interesting turn of events. But I was mainly wanting to talk today about Bobcat skid steers and construction equipment. I've got the tracked John Deere machine, and I was, I was telling you that I have a little bit of a problem with loss of power when I'm turning, if I'm doing anything else at the same time. So you were telling me that kind of Bobcat has a workaround for that or a better... Standard. It's not really a workaround. It's the way that the machines, we route our hydraulics. So we run a higher static case pressure into a block. And what that does, it allows the fluid to divert itself faster. So um, like a deer Kubota are notorious, if you go lift a full bucket, right? As you go to turn, you're going to feel that begin to bog. And a lot of it's the way the fluid is routed. Um, ours has a more shared system as opposed to in, where the deer and the Kubota, a little bit outside my knowledge base on exactly how. I just know that it doesn't get there quite as efficiently as ours. So if you take a full bucket of ours and you go to turn, you're not going to feel a loss of power where you're going to feel that with a deer or a Kubota pretty typically. And so that just really comes down to the way the Bobcat routes their hydraulics. So I didn't have the experience level to know if there's something wrong with my machine or that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. But beyond my one little question there, I was wondering more generally, why would someone choose a Bobcat? Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of things. One is power and then two is comfort. Right. And so and then third in the R series machines is going to be the cool their, their cooling capacity. So um, like this machine behind me set up for forestry. Um, it's very normal for a machine in that environment to overheat. Um, I can say we have over 40 of these out there. We haven't had one of these overheat yet. And a lot of that is the cooling capacity, which we can show you here in a minute. From the comfort perspective, the machine itself has a fully enclosed cab. So um, with that, if it's, if it's hot outside, you're going to stay cold. If it's cold outside, you're going to stay warm. Um, we have uh, vents all around you, at, up to your feet, all the way up to your head. Um, where if you, like, for instance, if you're in a Kubota with a roll-up door, you're not necessarily, you know, you only have vents down at your feet, right? And that cab door is notorious for not being able to seal very well. Um, from the power perspective, this machine's 105 horsepower. Um, the old 870 was 84 inches wide. This one's 80. This one has about 400 more lift, pounds of lifting capacity than the T870 does. Um, and in a more compact platform. So guys with you know, uh, fender well trailers can now load this machine and have more power than an 870. Uh, with, a, with, with an 870, that's not something you could do. Any other machine, um, a 299, a 333, an SVL 97, is, is still 84 inches wide. And so we're able to fit much more power in a more compact platform. And a lot of that has to do with the way we shifted the engine in line um, and then the radiator capacity. Now, what you are, I will say one downside you're losing with the Bobcat is a traditional offset on our machine was 70 in the rear and 30 in the front. That's a pretty typical configuration for track loader. Bobcat went to a 60-40 offset. So if you, and the reason for that one is track wear and balance. So it gives you more comfortable ride and your track wear is not near as intense. Now with that, when you get to the top of the lift cycle, you'll notice the machine getting tippier faster. That's something that you can counteract with counterweights. If that's something that you, that's important to you, not everybody's lifting things at full lift height, right? And so we try to design a machine that's, that fits what most people do which is dirt work, ground engaging, and things more at chest level on down. So, yep. yeah. Well, good answer. Mm -hmm. And then I have one to add to it is that Bobcat 
is going to have a huge dealer network mm -hmm. and you don't have to have any concern. They're not going anywhere. No, we're not. And import your product. Yeah. And even Bobcat as a whole is actually expanding that dealer network out. And so Bobcat's going to a model. We're still having their main construction dealers um, with the, the ground maintenance products, but Bobcat's now also expanding into having dedicated ground maintenance dealers that will be in more localized areas where traditionally Bobcat is going to be a city centered dealership. Um, they're going to have more of a network that's, they're not going to sell the construction equipment more in rural areas, but they have that, the ground maintenance, the tractors and things like that, but they can still do warranty work on the, on these larger frame loaders if they're qualified to do so. So I came really close to buying a Bobcat T66 mm -hmm. before I bought the John Deere and it was, it was close and I liked that machine, but I was buying as a complete novice who had like eight hours of rental time mm -hmm. on a skid steer. And uh, so I didn't have a good frame of reference. I'd really like to run one again now that I've got, well, got some hours on a deer. We'd, well, we'd be happy to put one in your hands. I think that um, the one thing, the reason I've been with Bobcat for six years, the reason I continue to stay here is that one, the machine is a good product and the company stands behind it. But two, um, I do a lot of demos, a demo against my competitors' machines. Our machines are not perfect by any means. I mean, you're gonna have issues with the Bobcat just as you would with any other. But when it comes to the all-around performance, um, Bobcat excels in the vast majority of areas. Now, there's some places where it might be deficient, but for what most people are doing, it's going to fit that need. Um, and then on top of that, um, you know, if, if you haven't run the newer R-Series model and you're, you know, the, the, the older 595 or 870 were good machines for what they were, but that was an older Tier 3 design. And when Tier 4 came out, just like everyone else, we just stack all the things on top of there to get the, to meet the emissions requirements. If you haven't run these new machines, they're worth trying out. And your local Bobcat dealer um, will likely put one in your hands, especially if you're running a competitive product. I should have warned you, you just used my trigger word when you said emissions components. Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of a rant about that recently. Yeah. We won't relive. Well, one thing too, that's just also to keep in mind when you have a, a deaf qualified Bobcat machine is we do not run a diesel particulate filter. We do not regenerate. Mm -hmm. um, so, a Bobcat runs at a much higher fuel rail pressure, which burns off most of, most of the particulate matter on compression. And so that's one component that's not in a Bobcat that is a, you know, a, a four to six year fail point on a machine that has to regenerate is that diesel particulate filter, especially if you're not an owner operator and you're a business owner where other people are running your equipment and they continue to bypass regen, that diesel particulate filter is something that will get clogged up, has to be burned off or replaced. Yeah, as much as I hate that region, you if it says do it, you better not. You better sit there and do it, and you better do it till it's completion. And so that's something on a Bobcat you're not going to see, and that just comes back to the engineering side of things. Um, and I think it was, that's, that's the engineering and the being on the cutting edge of stuff, I think, is where Bobcat has really excelled. And I think that's where these machines, if you haven't been in one yet, you haven't ran one yet, it's worth trying. So... Now we've given kind of an overview of maybe reasons you'd buy a Bobcat. You think if we walked around it, there'd be any features you could show us? Yeah, one, one of we can start right here on the track set itself. Sure. So um, one is, is uh, so one thing you can get now on, on any, in any machine T64 and up is the five link torsion suspension. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna do just increase your ride. That allows some independence, um, basically to where if you hit if you go you hit a rock on one side you're not going to feel on the left it gives you a much smoother ride and if you're in this machine for eight hours your your the comfort level you're going to feel when you get out and get up the next day is going to be better the second one is is running a triple flange rear roller so a lot of these 86s we're putting out in in forestry detracking is a big issue and so that triple flange roller and that's something that we can you guys can see down here at the bottom or not but it's locking that track that track in and this back rear idler, if it's a single idler, is typically where the machine, the, the track's gonna peel off, right? You go over a stump, you turn too sharp, it peels that off, that locks that in. Um, one thing that's also different too, the 870s had a hydraulic track tensioning system. They've gone back to grease. It was really a problem that didn't need to be solved. Grease works very well at keeping tracks tight. Um, so the track set itself is something where um, in 14 months since these machines have been out, we've had one of these D-track, so. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I've had one myself. Yeah, and it's a pain to put back on. It get, is. Especially because it never detracts in a nice in a nice spot. So this machine is set up for super flow. And what that means is, is a traditional Bobcat was around 36 gallons per minute at 3,500 PSI. Super flow gets it to 44 gallons per minute at 4,200 PSI. If you're running four shit, it does one of two things. One, you have more power going out to the machine. But two, the higher pressure allows it to build back tip speed faster. If you, you go into a tree, you're going to begin to bog it down. You can get back at the tip faster. 
right, you're, you're, you're operating more efficiently. But the block in the front has half inch couplers for your, tr your traditional accessories and then three quarter inch on the Superflow side when you're running a Superflow attachment. And then the case strain is obviously there. And then we still have the same seven pin connection. Um, and the benefit of that is if you're running Bobcat attachments, there's actually direct two way communication between the attachments. So if you're running um, like an angle blade or a dozer blade or something to that effect, right there, you don't have to sit there and switch analog pins to move a different cylinder. The machine will automatically know this button moves this cylinder, this button moves it this way, and it's direct plug and play. Um, even beyond that, if you're running like a greater setup, you got if you're out there doing you know large large dirt jobs, you know you're doing a, a multiple house at, you know, you know a, tr a row of track houses. So our dozer blade setup, or not dozer blade, the greater blade setup is direct plug and play with laser receivers. There's nothing you need to add to the machine. You literally buy the dozer blade, get the or the greater blade, get the receivers, have a laser, and it will work automatically. And it's all adjustable inside the cab. There's nothing to add. I remember when I was doing the demo. The, there was a screen that would show me what the the buttons did for that particular That's correct. attachment. And so all the attachments are still logged in that screen. So now it's a seven inch touch screen. And so it's very similar to the to the the software that Ford uses, if you're familiar with that. And it's just it's it's rather intuitive. But all of that is is in that screen. The backup camera, everything's there. So any attachment you're running, like we're talking about with a grader blade, it'll automatically pull that grader up. And once you bench and deem what grade's gonna be, you can adjust it by the tenth. On the left side, the right side, or both sides. So if you're too high on one, too low on other, you can adjust it on the fly, and you're really driving around an automatic, and the machine's doing the work, and you're just making micro adjustments as you go. So I was noticing that you guys don't have one of those really nice slide-up doors like mm -hmm. some of the other brands. Yeah. Have they not figured out how to make one, or is there another reason? No. The, so the main reason is is the, the roll-up door has has some advantages if you're a single operator because you can run it as an opener and closed cab. The real negative is. Is that, is that slide up door or roll up door as they call it, doesn't seal very well. And so any Kubota owner is gonna know after about three to 400 hours, you're gonna get debris around there because it's just not locking in well. The other part is that you don't have any vents up by your head, right? So if you got a cab, you're wanting comfort. Um, one, way, one way I can tell you we can get around that is Bobcat with, with the, the technology that's in here has a, something called max control. It's about $2,500, you add it to the machine, you can run it from your phone. So typically where, as a salesman, I struggle with Kubotas, like with fence guys that are single operators, punching holes. They want to be able to hop in and out. Well, you can actually hook your auger up and, and run the machine from your phone and be standing right next to it and punch a hole. And it's a really inexpensive thing that basically the machine already has. You're just basically adding essentially Wi-Fi capacity to the machine to connect to it. And you can run it from a phone or an iPad. That's a great answer. I had no idea. Now, I asked the same question to a Caterpillar salesman, mm -hmm. and I phrased it like, Deer, Bobcat, and Caterpillar probably are the top selling machines like this, and they all use a swing open door. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a reason. And he said that he'd worked in heavy equipment mm -hmm. previous to being a salesman for them. And he said, if I come up to a site and a guy's got the load up in the air mm -hmm. and he's trying to crawl out between a, you know, yes. that guy's off fired, off the job. Yes. Like, what there aren't that many use cases to want to have a load halfway up and get out the front. What I would say is if you're buying a cab, you're buying it for a reason. I, I do think Kubota makes a good machine for just general purpose use. I'm not going to say that an orange, all orange machines are bad. I do think the main reason that if you get a cab, you want air conditioning, you want to keep the, you want to keep the warm air out or the cool air out, depending on the season and a pressurized cab seals itself. And a roll-up door, it just it's not able to do that because it's relying on the pressure between those those hinges in the frame to keep it shut, not not the hinge and and being snapped closed. It's going to be able to pressurize itself better. And if you get in one of our machines, that's something that you'll notice is that they're able, that they hold their temperature very very well. And one thing that's different to us when I mentioned comfort is the cabs now are completely one-piece design. The, the the older M series machines were a two-piece cab where your footwell stayed in the base of the machine and the top of the cab lift up. Now the entire cab is one fully sealed enclosure. It's, it's a small thing, but it's, it's something that made some sense is the, the older windows opened over here. Well, you're sitting back here, so you had to lean forward to talk. Now they're right here where you're actually able to speak and talk through. Um, one thing too, that if, if someone really needs the machine to be open for, for a day, the door is very simple to remove. There's one, the, it's, it's, it's the, the hinges sit on gravity. And so, and then you have a shock and then you have the door, the door switch. So if you remove the shock, 
pull the switch out, the door just lifts right off if that's something that someone needs to do. In a, in a situation where, like say if you're loading out of a truck, you need to hop in and out, you know, again, that's not the safest thing. We don't recommend it, but it does happen. The doors are very easy to pop on and off. Um, so if you hit the top green button, So one, just, just all the controls, one on your right. So you have all your main function controls. So you got your start, your, your start, stop, traction lock, parking brake, lights and auxiliaries, and then your control pattern selector. So if someone wants to run in an ISO pattern or in backup pattern, all that's right there. So your main functions that you need are right there on the right, throttle control, and then your radio. Most people are right-handed, so the radio controls are right there. Now the radio controls can be mimicked on the screen, but if you like buttons, the buttons are there too. So if you want to type that, the code in for this one is one three. So and so basically right there you have all your you have all your main functions right. So you got your home and your gauges. So if someone's running like say forestry, vital is something you're, you're going to want to see. So in the top left corner you see that blue heartbeat. So you click on that. That's going to actually show you in digital format all of your temperatures and pressures, right? And so someone running uh, an accessory application like forestry wants to know what their hydraulic temperature is what the relief pressure is running at, and all those types of things. Um, the, the backup camera is integrated, so when you go backwards, it will pop up automatically, but if you want to keep it on all the time, you can select that, and now it's on. Um, your phone, so you can pair your phone to it. You can take calls in here. And again, it's still a piece of construction equipment, so it's not as quiet as, you know, say your King Ranch Ford is, but it's quiet enough where you can make a phone call and someone can hear you, you can have a conversation. You have to stop the machine to operate. Um, and if anyone's you know married and runs a machine, you know your wife calls, you got to take it. You can still operate and run it. Uh, you don't have to stop what you're doing. Um, audio, so the radio's built into a good radio, but you can also pair your phone to it. You, you hit the source button up there. You can change. Um, you can directly plug it in, or you can run it off of Bluetooth and, and use it as you need to. Um, service, so the service side of things, one, so you can record your services, view your schedules as Bobcat recommends it in there. You can view any active service codes, but also the machines come uh, standard with telematics on them. So you get three years uh, for free from Bobcat if, if you buy a machine that has a, that has a security package on it. If not, I believe it's about $120 a year. And that allows you to one, see your machine's location, um, see its fuel level, see if it has any active service codes, which is the main reason you're gonna want that if you're not the, if you're not the one running the machine. So it goes in there. And so our so the the track loaders have a 750 hour service interval. Um, you know, that's something that really depends on usage. If it's light duty usage, um, 750 is fine. If you're a heavy duty user, I'd recommend 500. Uh, oil changes are not expensive. Um, obviously, your local dealer can do it for you, but um, it's also our machines are very easy to service on your own. So you're gonna go to the next one. See your attachments. So. All your so any Bobcat attachment that has multi functions is going to have a CPU built into the attachment that allows them to communicate directly with the machine. Like I was talking about, you have to flip switches to go where you need to go. It shows you what the buttons do. Um, again, very simple to operate. Um, and then you, know, and you can go into your settings and you can change a lot in the machine. So you got your display settings, machine settings. So right there is one thing I want to talk about. So traditionally with a Bobcat, you can't. Uh, you couldn't adjust your right joystick. Now, with the work group settings, you can. So drive response, adjust your left. The work group settings, adjust the right. So traditionally, a bobcat was kind of in the middle uh, between a cat, which is a little slower, and a deer that's a little snappier. You can begin to adjust that up and down. Um, and then, yeah, so speed management. Um, basically, that, that allows you to see your, your trenching. You can slow the machine's movement down, but run full flow out to your, to your accessories. Um, anyone that's ever out ran a trench or a trench or jump, a trench or jump around on them knows what I'm talking about. So steering drift. So that's helpful. Say you're on an incline and you are trenching and you want to stay straight. You can actually put more power um, to the side, to the left side, the right side, forward or reverse as you see fit. Um, and so it allows you to stay in there. Um, there's even more in there too that you can look at uh, in those machine settings. So the lift and tilt compensation. Um, that's where you can, if you want to really dial in how snappy or how slow your, your joysticks are, you can really get in there and play with it. And if you set up your own your own code, it will save your parameters to where when you start it, it goes back to your settings and your partner or your other guys running the machine, they can, they can set their own. Um, so yeah, throttle mode, you can go into auto idle. Um, 
So, so also too, if someone's used to running the dozer, our, our, our accelerator pedal can also be a decel pedal. That's something that someone wants to operate. So, um, and then SCR management, again, so auto desox was where the machine will run at a higher temperature, but again, it's not regening. There is no diesel particulate filter. So I would say a lot of those features, but not all of them, but a lot of them are available on my machine. Yes. But they're, um, they're not controlled like that where i can very easily that's see right. exactly what's happening and that's what i'm saying is it's 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 the the intuitiveness of a bobcat of it's once you get in it uh once you spend about 10 or 15 minutes inside the cab things make sense as to what we put them where we put them yeah. so if you want to back out of machine settings um you know we can get to some stuff that's um yeah so the security settings so these are things where you can manage your operators and so say you manage an operator so hit click manage operators and, and say we're going to add an operator. So we can begin to add somebody who can put their name in, but also we can lock them out of high flow. We can lock them out of super flow. You got guys that want to run into buildings. You can turn off two speed. You get that guy that listens to the radio too loud. You can lock him out from the radio, from his phone. You can give him maximum forward and reverse speeds. Um, you can basically um, control what your operators can and can't do. If you got guys that have a tendency to cost you money, um, you can dumb the machine down for them. Uh, to keep them from damaging things on site. Seems like a big deal, really. Mm -hmm. If that, yeah, if you want to do the XX, we can go yeah. add one in there. Yeah. So quick start. What that's going to allow you to do, say if you don't want to put your code in every time, it will give you a 15-minute lockout window to where you can go in and restart the machine without to put your code back in. Um, and yeah. So and then password error line. Those are just different different security features that are on the machine itself. So let's talk about how hard these are to maintenance. So the one thing I will say, Bobcat um, is an owner operator's brand. They're they're built to be serviced in the field. Now our dealership or any Bobcat dealership will service them for you. And we're gonna charge you to do that. So, but the machines are set up very simply to service yourself. You swing out a swing back here. Um, the machines are fairly simple to access. So, so one thing I do wanna point out is generally just the size of the radiator itself. Um, in forestry, it's uh, I, I, we do a lot of forestry here in Oklahoma, so it's something that I, I know a lot about. The machines have a tendency to overheat. Um, out of the over 40 we put out in this environment, we haven't had one overheat yet. Um, and a lot of that is just the general capacity of this system. Now, the whole thing is it opens up very well, so you can get in here and access what you need to. So um, you obviously have your fuel filter here with water separator, um, def on the left, fuel on the right. You have your fan filter, which is right here. Basically, all of your service is is back here, with the exception of your main hydraulic filter, which is up underneath the cab on the back side. But again, that's two bolts that you remove out of the front, and the cab raises. And then, other than the only thing up there up front is the actual battery. Now you have jump posts here in the back if your battery does die, so you can access that. But again, we didn't want to like our older machines. The battery was kind of wedged in here. The heat would degrade battery life, um, and it's just generally a pain in the ass to get to. Right. If you had bigger hands like me, it's tough to get in there. And so we moved it towards the front because um, your battery dies. It's very easy to access that, move it up, get there. But if you need to jump it, you can here. So ch changing your oil. So it's maybe difficult to see in the video, but your oil filter is just right around here on the left. There's a drain hose in the oil pan at the bottom. Um, what we do in our shop is we'll just put the bucket on the ground, raise the machine up to tilt it back a little bit, crack that hose open, drain it all out, um, refill it back up right up here on the top. Replace your, replace your filter and you're good to go. This is much simpler to change the oil in this than it is in your own vehicle. And again, for light to moderate use, we're at a 750 hour interval. Now, if you're a heavy duty user, um, you're in a you know, dusty environment, you're pushing your machine really hard, I would lessen it down to 500 just because it's, it's, it's cheap insurance to change your oil. And that's something that I personally would recommend, but it's not what Bobcat recommends, it's just me personally. Um, our air filter, so we have an inner and an outer air filter. That's all, that's all right here. Um, again, very simple, very easy to access. Your fluid uh, for your radiator, it's also your coolants right there. Now, I will say Bobcat is running a purple coolant and on the T86, if it has super flow, is running a specialized hydraulic fluid um, that doesn't break down as much um, in heat. And so you do not want to mix your colors and that's with any brand. Um, and then your AC condenser. So the older Bobcats had that up here up top. They tend to get heat soaked and you're, if you wanted air conditioning in 110 degree weather, Sometimes it wouldn't cool the cab down very well. This is all back here, very easy to clean out. You can spray a hose through all this, clean it out, no different than you would like your AC condenser at home. Don't go power washing it. 
Don't go hitting it with cold water when it's still at full maximum temp for the obvious reasons is that change in temperature can cause things to break. But again, everything's very accessible back here. And if you're an older Bobcat user, you will notice if you kind of swing around just kind of how clean the whole setup is in here and very simple to access what you need to get to. All right. So you have been an absolute wealth of information. I want to thank you for taking the time to talk yeah. to us. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.